I want to talk about how you can recognize predatory journals and articles that seem to be peer-reviewed science, but actually aren't. Now, you, you probably know that there's a lot of competition among scientists and professors to publish. You've probably heard the ex expression, publish or perish. And that means that for a professor to stay hired, they need to, or to get hired, they need to, to publish a good number of uh, uh, scientific articles or whatever articles are in their, their field. With, the, uh, with everything going online, this, this phenomena of this need for people to publish papers has created a weird market phenomena where a lot of online journals say, oh, we'll publish your uh, paper for $600 or $300 or things like that. And they, sometimes they say they'll peer review it. Other times they'll just take whatever PDF that you get, stick it up on their website and take your $300 and say that, aha, it's been published in such and such a journal. These journals that don't genuinely peer review uh, articles are called predatory journals. They're set up by people who try to get money from, from professors who feel like they're under a lot of uh, uh, pr uh, pressure to, uh, to, to profile. And often they publish low quality, non-peer reviewed uh, journal articles written by desperate uh, researchers. And a lot of times the quality is abominable. Sometimes good articles are published in these uh, predatory journals um, because people don't know better and they actually do good work, but they didn't know that the journal was uh, predatory. So what when you start searching for articles, you want to avoid the predatory journals. You want to choose articles from reputable uh, sources, from journals that are well known, who have an uh, a serious editor who's an expert in the topic, who chooses peer reviewers who are also experts in the topic, so that only the best articles are chosen and edited and revised and eventually make it into uh, uh, print. So you've got to learn how to recognize predatory journals. Now, it's not always easy because there's no uh, magic way to uh, determine. There's a list of uh, 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 articles by a guy named Jeffrey Beal, B-E-A-L, called Beal's List. And he used to try to keep track of all these predatory journals until he started getting threats from them. And I don't know if he got a death threat or something, but he stopped doing it and saying it's not worth it anymore. Because these, if you're getting, if you have, 30 journals and they're getting $300 a, a piece and you're publishing 10 articles per uh, a month on these 30 journals, that's a lot of money. So there's a, there's a, a lot of uh, organized crime uh, associated even with uh, these uh, predatory uh, journals. So one way of doing it is just putting in the journal name with the word hoax or predatory and see what comes up, see if it's in some list known of predatory uh, journals. But there's other ways too. Um, now, one way is to be leery of journals published in countries without a long record of publishing uh, research. They may have much looser standards than established journals. So if you've got some country that uh, doesn't have a long history of science, things just kind of like the journals are, are uh, predatory journals are uh, are quite prolific in these countries. I think India and China are the main uh, uh, sources of predatory uh, 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 journals. But that doesn't mean that all journals from India and China are bad. I've published in an Indian journal. I have I've published a couple articles in a, um, a journal called Dharma Dipika, a missiological journal for Southeast Asia. And uh, it was uh, started by a a uh, group of scholars in India studying missiology, and um, it was always a journal that struggled to get high quality articles, and I knew some people that were associated with it, and I said, well, I want to help you out, and so I wrote a couple articles that were really good articles. Um, uh, 
and um, they were published, and the rest of the articles that they've published uh, are were also really good. Unfortunately, the journal uh, has gone up under, they couldn't keep it up uh, financially. Um, I've also written a, an article for a, a journal in Indonesia, and it is really struggling to have high enough quality articles, and because uh, uh, the, the, it's associated with a, a seminary there, and uh, the the editor running there it's not super fluent in English, and sometimes there's just things get messed up, and they don't happen quite the way that seems legit, and sometimes uh, they they look predatory, but I know from experience that they're not, and, uh, and they, uh, they, they're just really struggling to become a legitimate journal. So there are a lot of journals published in uh, other countries that are quite uh, legitimate. And a lot of times, um, the predatory journals will f will fake an address in the U.S. or in Europe, and to make them look like they're uh, an established uh, uh, journal. So you've got to watch out, Google around if things seem uh, doubtful. Um, another uh, way of dealing with uh, things is to uh, check out the journal on Google Scholar. So let me uh, bring over Google Scholar here. And uh, so I've got uh, uh, Google here. Let's go to Google Scholar. Uh, I've got a little uh, uh, app that'll take me directly to Google Scholar. And let's, uh, let's look up uh, perceived organizational support again. So we have uh, uh, got perceived organizational support. And this first article is Journal of Applied Psychology. I click there, and it takes me to uh, 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 APA's website. And it's in the Journal of Applied Psychology we see here in the reference. Um, how can we tell if that's a serious uh, journal? What we can do is we can. Um, in Google Scholar, we go to uh, uh, Hamburger, and then we go to Metrics, and this gives, here's the top scientific publications by how many times they're uh, uh, cited, how many articles have been cited at least uh, five times uh, in the last year or something like that. And Nature is the top scientific journal. Um, the New England Journal of Medicine, Science, The Lancet, um, and we've, we've got others in, in different uh, fields. Let's, uh, up here's a magnifying glass. Let's put in what are the top psychology journals, and it'll tie, look for the top journals with the word psychology in it. And we've got um, uh, Frontiers in Psychology, which is a new journal, but real popular, Clinical Psychology Review, Psychological Science, that's a top scientific uh, uh, journal that has a lot of organizational science in it, Journal of Applied Psychology, that's what we just looked at, and then Psychological Bulletin. Now, these three, Psychological Science, Journal of Applied Psychology, and Psychological Bulletin, are kind of the main three top journals for organizational psychology. Um, the uh, Annual Review of Psychology will have a bunch. Uh, Perspectives on Psychological Science will also. Um, the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology is often relevant. But Social Psychology is... Uh, um, relevant to uh, uh, organizational psychology, the branch of social psychology, the social psychology that occurs in organizations, and um, then a bunch of other ones. Now, if we look for, if we type in the word organization, what are some of the ones that uh, come up? Journal of Organizational Behavior, um, Organizational Science, Organizational Studies, um, a Journal of Economic Behavior and Organizations, more economics, not organizational behavior and psychology. And uh, we can also put in organizational, and that will give Journal of Organizational Behavior, Annual Review of Organizational Psychology. And these are our top, top journals. So that's a way of finding out what some of the top journals are. 
All right, so back uh, there, so that's um, uh, another way is finding out how is it a top journal in the field. Another way, is it available in your university's library? Your university probably only subscribes to legitimate journals. At least they would in a perfect journal. So let's get back to um, uh, Google Scholar. I'm going to go back a few pages. And here we've got, um, so the Journal of Applied Psychology, APU has a uh, um, uh, a uh, subscription for that. Now, they, this is all Journal of Applied Psychology um, that the most cited ones are in. Um, let's let's go further in five. And here is this Journal of Vocational Behavior. Uh, APU has um, uh, a subscription to that. Um, looks like they've got subscriptions to most all of these. Um, let's go further in. And up oh, here's one. There's no APU library. What? Let's click on this, or let's let's look at all five versions. That will give us more information. It's Journal European Journal of Scientific something. Let's click on that. See what we can find. Uh, what is this? The European Journal of Scientific Research. Ooh, I haven't known about that. So I would have to Google around to find the European Journal of Scientific Research to see if that's a serious journal or not, if it truly has peer reviewed. Um, another way is, do articles from this journal get cited much? So we could uh, go to, um, let's go back to, um, Google Scholar, and oh, sorry, I didn't get that there. Um, here we are, and what was that? The European Journal. I don't remember what it is. Well, let's look up. Uh, um, let's look up the journal Missiology. I publish a lot in Missiology, um, uh, and it's called Missionary Missiology and International Review, and Let's put it in quotations. And I search for it. And we see it several times. And here's uh, some uh, articles that are cited from Missiology and International Review. And sometimes it's just called Missiology. Um, the, um, I think that's what's happening there. But you see that, yeah, we've got like 20 pages. So a lot of these articles, none of them get cited very often because uh, here's a, um, one that gets at 16 citations. Because missiology is not a, uh, 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 a field of the sciences where everybody quotes each other very much. But we've got 20 pages. Now, if there's only one page and like it had been cited three times, that would be a red flag that it was not a good journal. And so an, and another one is check out the journal's webpage. Does the journal have a uh, web page? And if, uh, uh, let's go back to, if I, I do a search for uh, missiology, a uh, an international review. What do I get? I get yep. I get uh, Sage is one of the main journal publishers, and here's the website, and it talks about the organization that uh, uh, does it and gives all the detailed information, and um. It, it's got a legitimate uh, website. I could look up the uh, editors and see who they are, and that would give me uh, uh, an indication that it was a, a serious journal. So, so these are some of the ways of checking to see if a journal is predatory or not. Um, several people in this class have managed to find uh, journal articles and uh, for uh, uh, their, their research that were predatory and not uh, legitimate. A lot of times if you put in too many keywords, um, the, it'll give you just a very short list of journals and sometimes you get some really uh, uh, 
a real short list of journal articles and you'll get some weird ones. But if you're looking for the main topic, the, the main articles that have been cited thousands of times will typically turn up and those are good ones to stick with.